In Psalms 121, the psalmist is asking a question, where does my help comes from? He gets an answer, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 16, it says like this, the scripture goes like this, for surely it is not the angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. It is not the angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. Today, if you and I have faith in Jesus, that he is the Lord and Savior of our life, we are Abraham's descendants. And according to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 16, the Lord's help is upon us. The Lord's help is upon us. Now it is God who helps, and for surely, if you are Abraham's descendants, he, his help is upon us. Now, this morning I want to narrate the story of Abraham's life from Genesis chapter 12 till 22, and we can see how God helped Abraham, and we can learn from the story and take courage from the story when you are going through difficult times like this, just like how God helped Abraham, he will help even in this period right now for us. Amen. Now, coming back to the story of Genesis chapter 12, you know, where we can see God called Abraham. It is God who called Abraham and gave him a promise and Abraham felt compelled in his heart. This God can be trusted. He, he felt, uh, you know, he felt, I have not heard God speaking in the past. This God is unique. This God spoke. So it is worth trying out this God because he was a pagan worshiper. Uh, and then uh, because uh, he, he heard the voice of God by faith, he left the father's house and he followed this God. And God promised him a wonderful promise. He will make, he will make his name great. He will give this land. He will protect him. And in Abraham, all the nations, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. It was wonderful promise Abraham had. Now, when he came to the land where God showed this land, I'm going to give you. After a while, that land experienced famine. I'm sure Abraham would have battled a lot of fear and doubt in, in this moment of per period. He would have thought, did I really hear this God? This God is for me or against me. You know, as the fear and uh, uh, doubt was battling and battling in his heart and mind, it was taking inch by inch. He finally, instead of walking by faith, he gave into the fear and he walked by sight. He, he moved from the promised land to the Egypt where he had plenty of food over there. But that was not the place for Abraham to live in. As he moved to Egypt, it was not an easy, easy place for Abraham to live in. It was like, like uh, jumping from the frying pan to the fire. Now, even though he had a chance to move from the famine land from one end to the other end, but it was not easy for him to move from one corner to the other corner in Egypt because of Sarah. The moment he entered Egypt, he realized Sarah was beautiful. He realized because of Sarah's beauty, his life was at risk. He realized, you know, he would be killed and taken uh, and they would take Sarah as, uh, as Pharaoh's wife. So he requested Sarah, Sarah, please, you know, let me introduce you as my sister. And because of you, I can live. And she agreed to that. And then, uh, uh, and then, uh, Pharaoh took her as his wife, as his one of the many wives that he had, and he was she was living in uh, Pharaoh's house. And because of Sarah, Pharaoh gave a lot of goodies to Abraham. He got oxen, he got sheep, he got camels, he got men servant and women servant. He was quite blessed with material blessings. But this time he was not happy. Why? Because not only really he feared for his life in the past before coming to Egypt, now the fear has increased. Now, he is also having a lot of guilt because he disobeyed God. Now, for sure, he would have asked God for help. Now, God gave the promise 
and God took the responsibility to fulfill the promise in Abraham's life. He comes in this picture and rescues Abraham and Sarah and brings them out from Egypt. And see, we can see a similar pattern you know, of, of Genesis 12 in the, in the book of Exodus. How God helped Abraham and Sarah to come out from Egypt is the same way God is helping the children of Israel along with Moses to come out of Egypt to the promised land. So if God helped Abraham in the past, and he is helping his descendant in the future, you know, in the time of Moses. And for sure, he is doing the same even now in our life. That is why I read Hebrews chapter uh, 2 verse 16. It is not the angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. Today, I want to, you know, reassure, uh, because we put our trust in Jesus, we have the blessings of Abraham over our life. The blessings of God's you know, ultimate blessings that we, we experience uh, through Jesus, you know, of Abraham's blessings over our life. Now, God blessed Abraham, as I said, not only for Abraham, but through Abraham, God wants to reach out the entire earth. So God is blessing us so that he can, he can reach out to the entire earth. Amen. Now, during the time of famine, Abraham would have lost many things. And then that was in chapter 12. In chapter 13, we can see Abraham grew wealthy. He was rich. The land could not contain both Abraham and Lord's uh, and the, the sheep. They were fighting with each one another. And finally, Abraham decided, you know, to get separated. And uh, Lord went alone. And Abraham went opposite direction. When Abraham went opposite direction, God showed all the things. He says, look at the north. Look at the south, look at the east, look at the west. Everything what you see, you know, belongs to you. So now Abraham, Abraham was growing wealthy. And in chapter 14, we can see how Lord was captured in one of the uh, infightings happening between the two kings or four kings versus five kings uh, in, in, chapter, in, uh, in chapter 14. So in, in, in simple story, Lot was captured by the enemy king along with his people and taken away all the wealth. And when Abraham gets to know that Lot was taken captive, he, he goes to rescue uh, Lot and uh, brings Lot and all his wealth and all the families who was captured along with Lot. He rescues everything, everything, everyone and brings and gives back to the king of Sodom. So Sodom said, you know, Give me the people, take the wealth. And Abraham said, no, 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 no. It is my God who makes me wealthy. I will not take anything from you. So now you see how Abraham walked by faith. And then his Egypt was walking by sight. And then slowly he is walking by faith. He is slowly putting his faith upon God. Now, we can see like this, correct? In chapter 15, God comes to the picture of Abraham saying that, Abraham, I know you fought against many kings. Do not worry. I'm your shield. I'm your protection from all other people. And I'm your great reward. I'm, I'm going to really bless you. Abraham said, please, God, no more. And I'm, I, I have more than sufficient the, because I don't have a, a child to inherit. The servant in my house, Eliezer, his son will inherit everything. And God said, no, no, no. The one who comes out of your body will in inherit. So Abraham began to realize, oh wow, such a wonderful promise. And he believed in God. He believed in God. And that is where God calls him or the scripture calls him the righteousness of God. Amen. He believed in God. He was putting his trust upon God. Okay. He was called as a righteous man. That means he was trying to, he was believing in God and walking by faith again. Now, Chapter 16, we can see how, how uh, probably by now he would have spoken to his wife, the promise that God gave, not the Eliezer, not uh, Eliezer who is going to inherit the wealth, but his, uh, the one who comes out of his body will inherit the wealth. Now Sarah, you know, in her own understanding, she devised a plan saying that, okay, since I'm barren, probably God wants to use Abraham and somebody else. And... Uh, and uh, she can give me the, uh, you know, they can give the child to me. She would have, she would have thought like that. And, she, and then she made a plan 
asking Abraham to go along with Hagar to give uh, birth to a child. Now Abraham and Sarah now again walking by sight. They were walking by sight, making decision based on sight or based on circumstances. And then uh, uh, Ishmael was born during that time. And uh, till chapter 17, you know, things are going like this. Now in chapter 17, God comes into the picture and tells Abraham, Abraham, walk before me blameless. In another way, God is asking Abraham, Abraham, walk before me by faith. Because Abraham settled right now to walk by sight, you know, God is coming and encouraging him. Abraham, do not walk by sight, but walk by faith. Walk by faith. Fix your eyes upon me. I give you a promise that through you, I will bless you. It is through you and Sarah. Through you and Sarah. And Abraham began to laugh, you know, at God's promise. God it's not possible. I'm old. I'm, I'm old and I cannot do anything right now to produce a child. Sarah is also old. She cannot give birth to a child. We cannot do anything. And then bless Ishmael. God said, okay, I will bless Ishmael. But the promise that I gave you, I will fulfill it. Now why God is doing this is because simple thing. If God gave the promise and if we have fulfilled the promise, we can take the credit. We will not give glory to God. We will not appreciate that God is almighty. We will not worship this God. We will not, we will not follow this God. We, we, will, we will be following our own self. We will be making plans. We will be our own God of our own life. Because God gave a promise, such an impossible task, impossible for man to fulfill it. When, it. when it is happening in our life, we realize it is God who's promised. It is God who's fulfilling it. And we are giving glory to God and worshiping this living God. Worship and glory belongs to God, not to man or not to any one of us. That is what God is doing in, in Abraham's life. When God gave the promise to Abraham and Sarah, you know, and God is saying, I'm going to fulfill this promise. Abraham, do not walk by sight, but walk by faith. Walk by faith. So how he is asking us to do, asking them to do? Simply asking them to get into covenant with him of circumcision. We can see Abraham get circumcised at the age of 99. His body was cut, blood is oozing out, but no BP, no sugar, he gets healed quickly. It is not possible in, 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 in today's scenario, right? At the age of 40, some people having, are having uh, BP and uh, uh, sugar. But coming back to the story of Abraham, Abraham believed, but for some reason, Sarah is still not able to digest the fact that she can believe in this Lord. Okay. And in chapter 18, we can see how God comes and tells Sarah, Sarah, by next year, you will have a child. And Sarah laughed, you know, again, just like Abraham laughed, now she is laughing again. Now how it is possible my man is my husband is old and uh, i'm old we cannot have any child this is happening in chapter 18 and then we can see uh, 18 and 19 partially talks about a lot about lot and then chapter 20 comes to the picture where where uh, abraham moves to the land of gerar and abimelech was there as a king over there and uh, and because of the fear again you know walking by sight you know he calls sarah as uh, as his uh, uh, sister as his sister you know i don't know why they moved to gerar but a situation came they moved to gerar because of the fear he called his wife now now the interesting part of the story is very beauty very beautiful even though we can see abraham is making a mistake how God sees Abraham is completely different. We see a man as we see this man as weak man. We see this man as a fearful man. But God is calling this God is calling Abraham as a man of uh, you know as a prophet. If Abraham would be living in our community or in a church by now, we would have boycotted him. Abraham, you you are not fit to live. How can you call your wife as a, a sister? You know, please uh, don't take any leadership position. Please go through all this. Uh, you know, uh, lessons once again, we would be teaching Abraham like that. But God is not looking at like that. He's still seeing Abraham, you know, as a prophet. When, when we make mistakes, you know, we don't lose our identity. We are still the children of God. We are the sons and daughters of God. God sees that. God sees the image. God sees his likeness in us. And he, and he, he will definitely rescue us from where we are. But he will also teach us to put our trust in him. By now, what is happening, Sarah also is beginning to trust the Lord. 
as she begin to trust the lord probably abraham and sara both coming to faith in faith growing in faith and trusting the lord and they gave birth to son the promised son isaac now this time the glory belongs to god glory doesn't belong to man because it is god who gave the promise it is god who fulfilled the promise uh, through abraham isaac was probably man's strength sorry ismail was probably uh, abraham's strength but isaac is god's strength isaac proved it is god is capable of doing wonders in an unusual time we may be going through difficulties in our life if god has spoken to us anything and i want to encourage take courage from abraham's life abraham was walking by faith and walking by sight walking by faith and walking by sight but god was always there to help him and the same god is willing to help us even now even if you make mistakes maybe there will be consequences but god is willing to help us to walk by faith and fulfill every promise that he has given to us amen now uh when god spoke to abraham your body i just want to you know bring a a, a better understanding of the scriptures uh he god saw abraham and sara when god sees us it is us our body. when god sees us right now probably he doesn't see us alone yes he he loves us alone individually we are valuable to him we are unique to him but collectively he sees us as a body he wants us to use the church as his body and bless the church and be a blessing to the community so that is how god sees us otherwise one man can take the credit and now when we come as a body and we work together as body we all are coming as in one mind in unity and giving glory to god because it takes the body to fulfill god's plan it takes the body for god for the holy spirit to empower the entire body and coming together and doing god's plan so as body we are glorifying god as body we are becoming one and uh, worshiping god so it, it takes the entire body he, he wants to bless us individually but more than that collectively as a church so that we can be a blessing to the community amen now quickly i want to wrap the story now god was blessing abraham for the simple reason he gave a promise and he's fulfilling a promise now in abraham's life we can see up and down up and down up and down but in every moment god was lifting up abraham amen so that is what the scripture says jesus is the perfecter of our faith he helps us to perfect us in our faith so that you and i can finish this race successfully amen amen so now abraham was a shepherd in closing i want to bring this another story abraham was a shepherd and his grandson Jacob was a shepherd Abraham was shepherd his grandson was shepherd and we can see Isaac in between his son Abraham's son was shepherd and also farmer now even we read Isaac's life very interesting thing Isaac also faced famine just like Abraham did a severe famine he wanted to move to Egypt but God said don't don't go to Egypt stay back in uh, in the land where, where I called you to be and Isaac chose chose to stay in this land but again he made some mistakes but in that mistake he realized god is trustworthy and in this god we can trust in this god we can hope in this god we can you know depend upon so what he did isaac sowed in the in the in the land when the when the land was facing famine probably this could have done by abraham also but abraham missed it but his son sowed in the land of famine during the time of famine and he experienced hundredfold rewards now when economics are cry when economics are going down when we are experiencing famine god is still asking us abraham you know isaac change the method you are not shepherd alone don't move from one place to other place just like your father did i want you to change your ways maybe change the thing that you're doing you now in order for you to stay in this land you need to sow in this land so in this land use my method and i'm teaching you something you know use this way and because you're using my way you'll be blessed abundantly so god uh, gave ideas or blessings courage to 
Isaac to sow, and he sowed by faith, he reaped a huge harvest. Amen. So God is God is asking us, just like how he's challenged Isaac, he's challenging us, you know, I know there are difficulties, but trust me, try my method. As you try my method, you will experience the blessings that I want to give you and so that you can be a blessing for others. So we need to hear from God what he is speaking to us, what we need to do. So that is an individual responsibility uh, personally. But as a church, I believe he is asking us to change the method that we have been doing in the past. Maybe, you know, uh, we, are, we are wondering in this lockdown period, how can we go out and reach out? But God is telling you us, change the method, but you can still reach out to the people. We can use internet, we can use, there are so many tools that we are learning as a church, which will be sharing with uh, uh, us in due time. As we use this tool, I believe the harvest is ready and we can reach out to these people and, and, uh, and uh, bring peace into this house, bring peace into the house and joy and love and restoration of God's plan over the life, you know, God's restoration over the life and we can see all the goodness of God shall be established upon that family because we are reaching out to them. And they will also put the trust upon God and follow Jesus wholeheartedly. So in this, uh, just like Isaac changed his method, I believe God is also challenging us, change the method. We are all forcefully changing the method right now in one way to meet people, to share our thoughts, to 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 reach out to the people. So we are changing the method. I believe when you use the right tool, what God is telling us to use this right tool, we will see the harvest. Harvest is plenty. And as body, He is calling us to do these things. Amen. So as a church, when we come together in one mind as one body, when we do these things together as one, one body, the Lord will bless our efforts and he will bring the harvest through our, through our efforts. So God will definitely bring and uh, bring a blessings upon us and upon this land through, this, through the church, through his body. That is what I feel God is working in this, uh, in this uh, difficult period that we are going seeing things. This is what I can see in the Bible and I can feel and I can believe same thing God is doing in our times and when we work with God we can experience the blessings of God over our lives amen so God bless you uh, whatever I shared I shared uh, you know this our meditation and uh, God inspired me some of the thoughts I'm sharing with you if it, if it has been a blessing to us what I'm sharing please uh, you know meditate upon speak to your leaders and see how we, we can reach out to the community that we are uh, uh, God has placed us in. Amen. God bless you all.